And I'll share with you some context for our gospel reading before reading it in English. Jesus tells a parable about his second coming, indicating that it is not sufficient merely to maintain things as they are. Those who await his return should make good use of the gifts that God has provided them. Our gospel reading from Matthew chapter 25, verses 14 through 30. Jesus said to the disciples, For it is as if a man, going on a journey, summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one who, with the two talents also came forward saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here, have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked and lazy slave, you knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with the ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. You may be seated. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's begin our time together of, of reflecting on our Bible readings with a prayer. Let's pray. Gracious God, we pray that you open us up. Open us up to you and to your goodness. Open us up to the grace, the abundant grace that you have for our lives. This abundant grace that we receive in and through Jesus. Let your grace be what dominates our lives and flows from our lives. Through us, may others know your goodness. Thank you for the gift of Jesus. Let us find our life, our peace, our hope, our healing in the name of Jesus. Amen. So what did you hear in our Bible readings this morning? What reflections came to mind or inspiration or concerns or, or questions? I wish we could have Bible study time together to review all these readings, but for now we'll just go with a few of my scattered thoughts. 
uh, I have to be honest, I really struggled with the, the reading from Zephaniah. My thir- first thought was, oh my goodness, Zephaniah, good grief. Isn't there enough uh, gloom and doom going on in our lives right now without you piling on all this talk about destruction and ruin and the Lord's wrath? It just is so heavy. I'm not sure we can carry much more. Before our worship started this morning, I was talking with the choir about this reading from Zephaniah. And uh, together we recalled the old TV show, Hee Haw. Maybe some of you watched that show and remember the guys laying around and singing a song like Zephaniah would sing. They'd sing, gloom, despair, and agony on me, deep, dark depression, excessive misery. If it weren't for bad luck, I'd have no luck at all. Gloom, despair, and agony on me. Waiting for the choir to sing, oh! (laughs) If you haven't seen that uh, song on on Hee Haw, well, you're just really missing some something (laughs) classic. Burton just loves that that show. (laughs) So uh, I thought I would just ignore the reading from Zephaniah and, and move on to the other Bible readings. But, but then, as the week went on and I was thinking more and more about uh, the Bible readings, I, I went back to Zephaniah and I heard the message in a different way. Under these words of gloom and doom, I think is a great concern for people. Zephaniah is, is worried about the people. He's, he's worried about us. In a way, I think he's saying to us, be careful. Be careful, dear ones. Though maybe saying dear ones from Zephaniah's voice is a bit of a stretch. But I think we hear from Zephaniah a real passion. A real passion that comes from the Lord. To have people look at their lives. Look at the way they are living. Are they living in destruction and ruin? Are they headed for trouble? Or are they living in God, in God's goodness, trusting in God for life, for all of life, for salvation? I think Zephaniah is saying, be careful about where you find your meaning in life. Be careful about what you devote yourself to. Be careful that you don't put so much faith in the things of the world that you don't have faith in God. The earth and all the things of the earth will come to ruin. Even cities will be destroyed, Zephaniah tells us. Silver and gold, they're not going to save us. In the end of life or in the end of the world, the only thing that will be left will be God. Only God is eternal. And therefore, I think Zephaniah is saying, Be careful and put your trust in God. Put your trust in the one thing, the only thing that is lasting and true and reliable. Put your trust in God now and today because that's all we'll have in the end. Trust in God to find your life, to find your life in what will be left. And only God is the one that will be left. Only God is eternal. So now I can say, uh, thank you, Zephaniah. (laughs) Thank you for reminding me that what is most important in life is what will be the only thing that will be left for eternity. And that is God. Uh, we can too easily get consumed by the stuff and the things of this world and we can easily be distracted, pulled away from God. We can put our trust in in ourselves or in our things or in other people in in an uh, inappropriate kind of way and then left empty. 
Too often we feast on things that leave us sick or unfulfilled. So we need Zephaniah, his message, to, to redirect us to find our life in God. And then Psalm 90 kind of picks up on this message. Verse 1 reminds us that the Lord has been our refuge from one generation to another. From one generation to another, the Lord has been our refuge. And it tells us that uh, before anything was made, God was. And after everything is gone, gone, God will be. Therefore, our present life should also focus on God, this God who was, who is, and who always will be. Psalm 90 reminds us that our life in this world is fleeting. We're not going to be here forever. But in God, we can find our hope. Our hope for each day. Even joy for daily life. And then as we turn to the reading, uh, 1 Thessalonians, I think Paul here really brings the message home for us. Did you hear what Paul had to say? Uh, in this dark and often difficult world, we are children of the light. What sustains us and gives us encouragement are the gifts of God. What helps us endure these struggles, this dark time in life, are God's gifts, gifts of faith, the gift of love, the gift of hope, the gift of salvation. All of these are ours through Jesus. All these gifts of God are what we have to live on. We can endure these struggles because we have these gifts, the gift of faith, of trusting in God, the gift of, of love, a great and undeserved kind of love, agape kind of love from God. We have hope. Our hope is in God, our salvation. Our salvation is in God. This is our light in dark times. This is the light of Christ that shines in our lives and then even through our lives. So here again, these words of encouragement, these words of hope, as Paul writes, but since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love. And for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has destined us, not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up each other as indeed you are doing. It's a really great message for us, an important, a vital message for us to hear today, isn't it? We really need these words of encouragement. and We need each other to, to lift us up, to, to be reminders of, of one another, of these gifts of God that, that sustain us, these gifts of God that we have in abundance, these gifts of God that we have through Jesus to get us through life, each day of life, that help us endure the struggles. These are the things that will see us through this life even more than the worldly things. God provides for us this, the good and the life-giving things we need for each day and for eternity. These are the gifts we have, we receive. Through Jesus. So then, if we, we now move over to our gospel reading, uh, so much in this parable of Jesus that we could talk about today, and, and I, I hope you'll take opportunity for Bible study to, to really dig into this parable of Jesus. But what I really want us to hear from this parable this morning is the joy of life that we have as we live in the abundance of God's goodness. Abundance of God's goodness. Uh, I, I read about the, these talents, like uh, how much is a talent back in Jesus' day as he is telling this parable. It's, it's like uh, one and a half million dollars for us today for just one talent. 
One and a half million dollars. That's an incredible gift that this uh, landowner gave even to the one that only got one. A gift of one and a half million dollars? <laughs> what would you do with that? <laughs> what would you do with one and a half million dollars? Are you going to put it in the ground? <laughs> oh, tithe it. If Pastor Greg says tithe it. Yes, please. Uh, 10% will help the ministry of the church. <laughs> But he also says in this parable, life without God's grace or life that's not lived in this incredible gift is, is like living in outer darkness where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. Life outside of God's abundant goodness and grace is, is like uh, living in darkness where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. And God doesn't want this for us. God wants us to thrive, thrive in His goodness, to be consumed by God's abundant goodness and grace for us. That's what Jesus is bringing to the world and to us. As we share in God's grace, and as uh, God's mercy and love is filled in our lives, and then also expressed through our lives to others, Sharing this goodness of God with others, it's multiplied. It's multiplied. It grows. God's goodness grows the more we live in it and share it with others. Our lives then enter into the joy of the Master. The joy of our Master. God is so pleased when we show God's loving care to one another. God is so happy when we bring maybe a taste of heaven a sense of God's love and mercy and grace uh, to one another's lives. As we take into our lives the grace of God, it brings us to life. And as we share that grace with others, they too know God's grace and care and goodness for their hurting lives. As we encourage one another and build each other up, then we all know the joy of our Master. The joy of our master. Uh, that expression means that to enter into the joy of the master. Enter into the joy of your master means that we have a place at the table. We have a place at the table of, of God's eternal banquet. We have a place at the table of God's eternal banquet. The gift of Jesus for us to live in, to rejoice in, to share with others. The joy of our master is an eternal feast, eternal feast on God's goodness and salvation. This is what God wants for us. This is what God provides for us in Jesus. This is what gives us hope for life. This is our salvation, salvation for each day, for every day, our eternal salvation. Our lives are filled with gratitude, with thanks, with praise to God was sharing this abundant gift. I don't know about you, but I really needed to hear this message today. And I hope it's an encouragement to you too. These are difficult times. These are difficult days, especially as we more and more have to stay away from each other. We've, we so miss contact with each other, the, the hugs and the caring conversations. We, we miss our worship time together, lifting our voices in praise together. So with all that's going on in this time apart, we desperately need to hear and to take in this encouragement of God, this hope of God, this salvation of God. We take to heart God's grace for our lives so that we can live in it. We can find our life in it. That this can be the light that, that breaks our darkness. And so that we can make a difference in this world and in other people's lives as we shine with the light of Christ. Amen.